Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia Part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, we saw that based on symmetry, we can divide organisms into three types. Asymmetrical animals, radially symmetrical animals and bilateral symmetrical animals. So let us now talk about the third parameter that is diplo and triploblastic organization. So what are we going to talk here in diploblastic and triploblastic organization? This basically these are the terms which actually tell us the arrangement of cells in the embryo. So here we are taking into consideration the embryology, how the embryonic development happens in different types of animals. So looking at the organization of cells in the embryo, we can divide them into two types. One is diploblastic and one is triploblastic. So let us see what it is. So the number of primary germ layers in embryo. So let us first try to understand the origin of the terms diploblastic and triploblastic. Well, here, wherever you have this diplo, I mean, wherever you have this word di, that means two. Blastic is a term which is derived from blastula. Similarly here, triplo would mean three and blastic is derived from blastula. Now the question is, what is blastula? Now what happens during reproduction, the male and the female gametes combine together to form zygote, right? Then what happens to this zygote? This zygote will gradually form the embryo. That embryo will grow to form the baby. That is how it is, broadly, right? But there are several stages which actually is present between zygote and embryo and embryo to baby. It is not an instant process. The zygote immediately doesn't become an embryo. So this series of steps is known as embryonic development. Now when this embryonic development takes place, what happens is the cell grows. So there are layers of cells, new cells which come up. So that is how embryonic development actually take place. So the number of primary germ layers which is present in an embryo actually tells us about the organization of that animal. Now in some animals, the primary germ layers, do you understand what I mean by primary germ layers? Primary germ layers are those which are formed from the blastula. Now as I said, blastula is nothing but a hollow sphere of cells during an early stage of embryonic development. So when this embryo develops, you have this stage called blastula, which is nothing but a spherical group of cells Right? It is a hollow sphere like structure. So this blastula will grow and it will gradually give rise to germ layers. So this blastula will give rise to germ layers. And what will these germ layers do? Now these germ layers will actually later form the different parts of the body. So now we can say that the cellular arrangement in our body actually connects to the embryonic origins of the tissues of our body because basically everything is happening from here. So from blastula, germ layers will be formed. Now in different types of animals, different number of germ layers are present. In some animals, there is just one germ layer. In some animals, there are two germ layers. In some animals, there are three germ layers. Now, each of these germ layers will give rise to certain parts of the body. So, in those organisms which have three germ layers, they will have more specialization in their body. Whereas, an animal with just one germ layer, so obviously, he will not have that much of specialization in the body because the number of layers are less. So, depending upon the number of germ layers present during the embryonic development, we can tell a lot about the structure of that animal. So the number of germ layers present in the embryo also plays a very important role. So there are three possibilities. There can be one germ layer, there can be two layers. So if there are two germ layers, it is known as diploblastic. If there are three germ layers, that animal is known as triploblastic. 
So these germ layers give rise to every organ of the body, starting from the skin and hair to the digestive tract. So not only the external organs like skin and hair, but also the internal organs like the digestive tract. So you understand the significance of the germ layers. We are not studying about embryonic development in detail now, but when you actually study about that part in detail, you will get to know more about blastula. So now you know why it is known as diploblastic, why it is known as triploblastic. So let us now talk about diploblastic animals in little more detail. So these are the animals where cells are arranged in two germ layers. So the blastula will give rise to two germ layers here. One is called ectoderm and the other one is known as endoderm. Ecto, the ecto always means outside and endo means inside. So the outside layer is ectoderm. So here if you see this purple colored outside layer is ectoderm and this layer inside gray colored layer that is endoderm. So this layer is ectoderm and this layer is endoderm. So this is how the cell looks like that. I mean, as I said, first there is blastula, which is nothing but a collection of cells. Now those cells will gradually, some of the cells will move inside and they will form endoderm. Some of the cells will move outside and they will form ectoderm like this. Then this ectoderm will give rise to certain things. This endoderm will give rise to certain things. And that is how the embryonic development actually happens. Now, between the ectoderm and the endoderm, an undifferentiated mesoglia is present. So, where is mesoglia? This red colored layer which you see here, that is the mesoglia. Meso means middle and glia means something which acts as a glue, something which acts to connect two things. So, here mesoglia connects the ectoderm and the endoderm. So here you see if you look at the diagram here the mesoglia doesn't show the cells because it is not very specifically made up of cells that is why it is known as undifferentiated. Now what does these two layers do? Endoderm gives rise to organs like stomach, liver, pancreas, urinary bladder, intestines etc. So endoderm that is the inner layer will give rise to all internal organs whereas Ectoderm, that is the outer layer, will give rise to external things like epidermis, hair. So it will give rise to such things. Mammary glands, central nervous system. So these are some of the things which will arise from the ectoderm. So now you understand the significance of ectoderm and in endoderm. So these kind of animals are known as diploblastic animals. Now see, as I said, Dividing or classifying a kingdom is not an easy job. You need to take into consideration as many parameters as you think is required. So that's why we started with... Um, so when I started with the basis of classification, I started with the level of organization. Whether it is at a cellular level or a tissue level or organ level or organ system level. Then we spoke about the symmetry, which is all about the external appearance of an animal. Then now we are talking about the internal structure of an animal. I mean, internal formation of that animal, how that animal is actually formed. So we went back to its embryonic stage. So these kind of animals which have two germ layers are known as diploblastic animals. Examples are cylindrates like hydra. Let's look at, let us look at the triploblastic animals. So here they will have three germ layers. So the previously germ layers, ectoderm, endoderm are present, but now we also have a mesoderm. So meso means middle. So that means mesoderm is present between ectoderm and endoderm. So this was our ectoderm. So everything remains the same. If you see here, this was ecto, this was endo. It is just that the mesoglia is replaced by the mesoderm. Now if you look at the mesoderm, it also consists of cells because it is a specific germ layer which is made up of cells. So now you have three layers. Now the question is what will this extra layer mesoderm do? What will this form later? So here a well differentiated mesoderm is present between ectoderm and endoderm. Okay. 
So mesoderm gives rise to skeletal and muscle tissue, blood, lymph and connective tissue. So these are some of the additional things which will get added if mesoderm is present. So the skeletal and muscle tissue which will help in movement, blood, lymph and connective tissues. So this will be contributed by the mesoderm. So if mesoderm is absent, then all these things will also be absent. Like the skeletal and muscle tissue and all those stuffs will also be absent. So these are triploblastic animals. So examples would include platyhelminths, annelids, arthropods, chordates. So most of the complex animals which we see, they are all triploblastic. They have got all the three layers. So the inner layer will form the internal organs. That is the endoderm will form the internal organs. Ectoderm will form the external stuffs like hair, skin, mammary glands. And mesoderm will form skeletal and muscle tissue, the connective tissues, lymph, blood, etc. So now you understand the arrangement of the layers or the germ layers during the embryonic growth. So this was our next basis of classification. So based on this, we could classify some animals as diploblastic, whereas some other animals as triple. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.